So we're out here getting materials for a project. I'm on camera. <laughs> I tilted them a little bit. The forks. I'm videoing this. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, out here, homeland fence, getting materials, and <laughs> it's kind of tricky. I don't have a headache rack on this truck, so we have to do what we can do. What we can do. You're free. I believe it's going to work out pretty good. Yeah. Can they help you push that over in the center? Oh, yeah, get it. You don't mind being on video, do you? I do not, sir. <laughs> got a camera going in here. I think I get it. Oh, yeah, I'm a big story. You don't have a headache, right? So look at it. Yeah, it's good. Well, you definitely ride right there. <laughs> get it strapped on, it'd be good to go. All right, let's see. What about the L fit? You gonna wait on that? We'll put one on this side, one on the other side. There you go, okay. I'll grab that, dude. Yeah. And here, I got that uh, bag of pigeons here for you. Okay. No headache crack, no problem. <laughs> 21 foot metal. Every day's a challenge. bit guys we're out here on another project miss polly's up there straightening up t-posts and sorry about the wind it's, it's always like this this time of year but it's just a little bit entryway we're gonna have some gates up there really nice little uh little area this guy's got a house back in here and we're putting him in the entryway so he can keep people from coming down this driveway uh he put this driveway in and people just randomly come up in here and drive up in here there's an access road that goes up into this little hill here so just putting him in some gates and a little bit of fence keep people from just driving out in here hey guys it is resurrection sunday uh more properly known as Easter I guess something was over here blowing at us I was letting the water out of the tank into the horse trough just got through feeding I did a live just a while ago uh, wasn't snowing this bad something was blowing at us over here though I don't know if it's a cow or a deer or what 
I believe it was a cow blowing at us. They want in here so bad. I don't. <laughs> they walk. They walk right past our gate. Walk. Walk around our fence. I'll show you. <laughs> that's where they walk at. I mean that. That's a cow track right there. <laughs> they, they wear a trail out all the way around our fence. When we didn't have the fence up, we would come home and it'd be down here around the pens, just laying around. I think mostly for safety and security. Well, water's getting on my camera there. Ophelia and Delphine, they get over here in this hay and they kind of tear it out, as you can see. But they like to eat the little tender grass that's in there. And uh, that's, that's Delphine. Ophelia's around here somewhere. I seen her earlier. These chickens have probably went to roost. Right there, some eggs. Looks like it's about time to clean this coop out too. Are you following me? <laughs> Are you following me? Don't you think it's about time to go Go to bed. Got three eggs. It's pretty good out of four hens it's laying. The snow is really coming down now. So I'm gonna go to the house and we'll see what we can't do tomorrow. Yet another storm front coming through. Today we went to town It always looks like uh, Clampets goes to town at our house because we get everything we need in one trip. Try to. I've got to go take and unload this. Uh, the materials are for a customer. Uh, we've got to go drop them off at a later date to them. But snowing again. Babe, don't you just love us weather? Hey folks, we are out here today playing in the mud. This is muddy and rocky and I'm kind of glad it's it's muddy to be honest with you because I wish it wasn't this muddy, but it's it, the ground is soft and there's a lot of rock in here so it makes it easier for us to dig the uh, the rock out. But we're fighting mud, I mean, my feet get big old clumps of mud on them it's kind of a real sticky sticky ground here ain't it mama so what we're doing here today is we're putting in an entryway right here it's a little access road uh, and we're just going to put in a compression gate i'll try to show you that when we do it uh, maybe on next week's vlog i've kind of decided to just do a weekly vlog and kind of put everything in it that we're doing that week. This is our, our down brace. We had a bunch of these plates that we took off of T-posts in really rocky ground or really hard ground and had a hard time driving the posts. We just bust them off. And we're gonna put them on the bottom of these posts so that when we fill it with concrete, uh, it'll kind of fill in around it and give it kind of a, a brace to push on the concrete and not just the pipe here's a better picture of one we've got that cleat screwed to our upright and once that concrete gets in around it it'll keep that pipe from sliding into the ground if you got rocky ground or you got hard ground it's not as a big a deal but when you got soft ground like this and you know it's gonna get soft again once it gets wet, you wanna make sure you put a cleat, whether it's wood, pipe, whatever it is, you're gonna to wanna to take and put a cleat on it of some, of some kind to keep it from sliding into the ground, cutting into the ground and your post coming this way. Particularly on our, our end braces, this is a gate, but it's a compression gate, uh, so it's not as critical. 
but we will tip it out about 15 degrees and that will compensate for some pull on it so it's looking good though we actually had to put a cleat on this post because evidently when they put these guy wars in they just dumped some rock down the hole on top of the the anchor and the dirt didn't get packed in there good so when i was digging the hole i hit with a spud bar and i've just about lost my spud bar down the hole so <laughs> hadn't had that happen in a while so we had to put a cleat on on this post to keep it from going further into the ground all righty folks we have got this little project to where we'll wait for it to dry up let the concrete set up we'll bury all this stuff and then we can stretch wire and build a compression gate right here we'll build it out of this pipe i'll put a cheater bar on it so it's good real good and tight but pretty good day's work so to end up the week we went over to some friends of ours house and they had gotten uh, several young horses off of a ranch um, that had never been handled they just been running around ranch and uh, this little stud horse here little strawberry roan uh, really good mover i like the way he moved they had never been able to get their hands on him uh, he's real real skittish real scared so he's been in close proximity with people but we never got their hands on him what I'm doing here in the beginning, I try to lay a groundwork of getting him to stop and look at me. I never just go into a round pen and just rope a horse. Um, you want the horse to be predictable. And I'm trying to set a, um, a pattern here so that he will stop and look at me and now that I've done that I'm gonna take him uh, I'm gonna rope him here and it's not to you see he gets pretty excited it's not to uh, overpower the horse or to choke the horse down or anything like that it, it's about having a, more of a connection to the horse. See, he gets, he gets pretty excited about this rope being on him, uh, getting around his hindquarters. He'll run, he'll just run over you. He doesn't quite understand, you know, that he's supposed to turn. By the end of the session, he does a lot better with that. He's gonna need quite a, quite a bit of work. Get him where he's tall to rope but I just use the rope as a connection to him. Um, he, he really has a hard time um, wanting to look at you out of the left side. He, he, he likes his right side. Um, he's more comfortable on his right side. So he's, he's right side dominant. To the, to the left, he has, he has a hard time looking at you. He has a hard time go in that direction and he will just run over you if you're not awful careful. So I work with him here quite a bit um, trying to get him on his left side, trying to develop that left side because usually that's where we want to approach him and when you get a horse in a round pen you start noticing how they think, uh, which side they're dominant on, things like that. So this horse would be a whole lot more approachable on his right side than he was his left. But you can see here, he, he wants to be on that right side. Got the rope around his hindquarters. I'm trying to get him to feel, feel that and stop and maybe yield his hindquarters a little bit. 
they had a they got a Rhodesian Ridgeback that never quits running outside the realm again. Long time ago. You can see every time he gets on that left side, he wants to go back and face you on the right. He just is not comfortable on that right side. If a horse wants to go and wants to run and, and is feeling that pressure, uh, I'll just let him go. Try to get him used to it, try to get him to calm down about it. And this is the first time this horse has ever had a, a rope on him. Uh, he's never had a rope on a horse. All this is new to me. Here again, I'm just trying to get him to yield that hip and turn around and go the other direction. Sometimes you get into situations with these young horses, you just do the best you can. You know, him wanting to run through me, run through the pressure, you'll see me get bigger and bigger. Now you get him on that, every time you get him on that, that left side, he'll switch back to the right side. And see, I can step over in front of him, he'll just run through me. Doesn't quite understand yet, he has to stop. So just keep moving him forward. Eventually, his, his feet will get tired. And he'll want to sit still. Every time I cut him back to that, that left side, he doesn't want to face up. He doesn't want to face me more. So I got a hold of him real big because I hated, I, I hate running the horse round, 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 round because I'm just so tired you can't think. Um, and some of these horses that have never been handled before will do that. So I really got a hold of him there, really got his attention. Pulled on him like here, really pull on him, just to get him to face up. Because this horse here, he go, he go for a long time, and then just be so tired you can't do nothing else with him. And I don't want a horse, you know, to the point where they're just running from me the whole time, and the last thing is is get them so tired that they they can't think doesn't really do any good. If I can stop that fear process of them running, that's what I'll do. So sometimes I'll get a hold of them real big and put forth some effort like that right there. You see, he's just real scared. And you have to balance things out. I'm trying to build a, a pattern here of approach and retreat. You see, he's back on that right side. And I just want him to face up to me and stop his feet. And as soon as he stops his feet and stops pulling, I release and release that pressure on him. Um, he's just really, really scared. A chute would do a lot for this young horse if you had a chute to put him in uh, where you could handle him all over. He's just got a real fear of people. All these horses do. If I can approach, then I'll retreat. And at this point, this is the best you can do is, is just build that pattern. And anywhere in there where you could approach and retreat will be a good place to quit. Um, but now that I have a rope on him, I have to finish my, my training with him so that he's calm enough that I can reach up there and take that rope off. And I don't want that to be a bad experience either so I have to do the approach and retreat approach and retreat uh, just to get him comfortable with me coming into him reaching up to him letting him smell me and I generally like for the horse to touch me first uh, I want the horse reaching out being curious and the more you approach and retreat these wild horses the more curious they get I'm letting him smell me. He's touching me there. And then before he bolts, 
I'll retreat. And you kind of got to gauge them. Sometimes they're going to bolt and they're going to they're going to take off, and you just have to come back, get them to stop their feet, and that's what the rope kind of helps me do. I mean, I'm not going to overpower this horse. Um, not me, physically. If I had another horse, I could. If I had a post to, to time to, I could. But I'm not going to overpower this horse. He's bigger than I am. But the rope gives me a connection to him where I can say, don't leave. And it becomes a support for the horse when he wants to leave. And I can kind of reposition his feet. Horses always posture and preposition themselves to do what they want to do before they do it. So if I have a rope on him and he goes to posture a certain way, like he's going to leave or he's going to, he's going to do something, then I can reposition him and cancel that thought so that he doesn't do what he was thinking. Um, if he prepositions himself to bolt, I can kind of, I can kind of help him and, and turn it into something else. And that's the key to, to training horses. Just being one step ahead of them, uh, watching them for their posturing, their prepositioning. They'll tell you what, what they're going to do. This whole time I worked him probably about 45 minutes to an hour. He had a lot of energy. Still just trying to go forward um, on that left side, trying to approach him, head him, work up there to where he's not nervous about my hands up by his eye so that I can take the rope off of him. And that's all I'm building towards at this point is just trying to get him calm about me touching him, rubbing on him, and being able to take that rope off of him. Approach and retreat, approach and retreat. That's the first step to getting a horse to trust you is just not put too much pressure on him in the beginning. See me reach up there and try to touch the side of his face. I don't have to leave all the way at this point. I kind of just take my body away a little bit. And there he was trying to pre-posture and pre-position himself to leave. I'm saying, no, just stay here with me. And I'm having to be pretty stout with him because he's he's pretty pretty strong. And he's got a strong flight instinct. So I have to kind of match his energy in order to get him to just to sit still. I worked three horses up there that day. Um, two of these young horses and one older, like thoroughbred horse. Just trying to lay the foundation and teach our friends how to work with these horses that have that have never been handled before. Here's the end of the session. I turned, actually took the rope off of him and turned him loose. And I wanted to be able to move back in after I took the rope off and really get my hands on him. I was able to touch him and rub him and, and that sort of thing. And I wanted to, to demonstrate to the to our friends that you know, now you can kind of control the horse's feet with pressure in front of the shoulder, uh, pressure behind. You can move the horse forward. Here the horse wants to move forward, and I'll move back. Horse wants to move back, and I'll, I'll kind of block him with my, my body, and my position, and my pressure. Like right there, I step in front. So now he's starting to really read me. You can see he stops and turns. He kind of likes this corner here. Now I'm able to come in without a rope on him and just rub on him. He wants to leave. Now I'm able to just take and rub on him. 
So we got a really good session in to where he really came around. So that's how we kind of ended up our week. He wants to, they can leave again. Bring him back. Get him to stand. Stop. Look at me. Approach. So, pretty good end to a session with young horse um won't continue working with this horse we got to get them to where they're broke to lead and we can we can trim their feet and vaccinate them deworm them that sort of thing this colt's not not quite yet two years old so it's gonna take him a little bit i believe you're gonna make a nice little horse once he once he takes and grows up, and we get a good handle on him. Here you can see he likes that corner. Moving in, letting him smell me. All right, folks, we're up here on another project. I'm going to wrap up this last week right here. Uh, I may bring some of this to you. We're putting up an eight-foot elk fence. I'll kind of show you what that looks like. A lot of elk up here. We're up here by the mountains. If I can, I'll get some shots of it. But I'm going to leave you guys right there. We had an interesting week. I'm trying to do like from Sunday to Sunday, something like that, so, so that you guys just can kind of get our weekend recap. So appreciate you all for stopping by. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And remember... If you don't know which way to go in this old world, submit your ways unto the Lord. Trust also in Him. He'll bring it to pass. We'll see you later.